Dead Podcast. How are you? Ah. <laughs> How is everybody doing? I hope you are well. We're good. Oh, I forgot. Hey, Bob and Will, how are you? Shut up. I didn't know it talks to you. Uh, it does normally during other streams. But anyway, how's everybody doing? We got a podcast. Uh, we got some new setups going on right now. So uh, hold on to your butts for some technical difficulties. Uh, yeah, get, get ready. But a special hello to uh, Spyro for the eight months who says hey bob and will how are you thank you for the glorious and fun eight months bob and more to come i love you keep the awesome coming thank you so much i appreciate you uh anyway we got a bunch of stuff to talk about don't we will that's right we sure do on this uh as known in japan as national godzilla day that is the holiday that everybody is celebrating today and nothing else Oh, Will, Will's a robot today, it's by the there. way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. What, it's National Godzilla Day in Japan? Yes. That, that is a real thing that is happening right now. I've never heard of or such a thing. Because I guess it's like tomorrow. Me neither, but apparently today is the day. I stayed, when I went to Japan, I stayed on Godzilla Street with the big Didn't Godzilla you stay head. Did Godzilla thing. Hotel? I did with the big Godzilla statue. Yeah. Anyway, Tactical Anders, thank you for the two months. So glad I could finally catch your podcast live. Love your streams. Thank you so much. I accidentally uh, sent started this stream as a Pokemon stream. <laughs> so, <laughs> so people who get the notifications on their phone are not going to realize this is the podcast. It's the podcast. Welcome yeah. to the podcast. Um, anyway, Will, did you know there was a Nintendo Director last week? I completely forgot. Uh, yeah, it caught me off guard. I had to watch uh the the archive version of it because i was too busy taking my daughter to the pediatrician she's fine Aww. by the way um but yeah so i had to watch it all afterwards but i think it was better that way this way i didn't have to rush to be at you know my tv at this exact time i could watch it at my own pace I watched, you know, I usually I watch them pretty late because they're pretty early in the morning. This one I watched like an hour yeah. after it was up, and uh, it was right. It was okay. But first, before we talk about that, will that's what are right, we doing? ladies and gentlemen. It it may be a new podcast. We're still gonna tell you all the games that you can get for free if you're a member of PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, because it's the beginning of the month. And ladies and gentlemen, they've announced, or in this case, released their new free games. That's right. So usually we start with PlayStation here. Yes. And we'll keep the tradition going. Uh, so starting today <gasps> on the PlayStation 4, you get Middle Earth Shadow of War and Hollow Knight Void Heart Edition. That's cool. Okay, so... Middle Earth. That was this is the first one, right? That's the second one. Shadow of War is the second one. Shadow of War, the second one. Yes. Okay. Now, little controversy in the Wolf Den because I thought Shadow of Mordor was great. Bob is a big dum dum, <laughs> and didn't think that game was all that good. I didn't think it was good. Here's why I didn't think it was good. At the time, there was a lot of games that used the exact same uh, kind of gameplay loop and fighting the mechanics and stuff. And like yeah. Assassin's Creed style, like and, open world. And I don't necessarily think it's the game's fault. I think I was just completely burn out, burnt out by that type of right. game or that type of combat. Um, that being said, I think it did that style of combat uh, worse than the other games because it treated you like an idiot because it put it the it put the literal <laughs> buttons that you had to press above the enemy's heads and so, that made me feel stupid. So, aside from that, if you ask me, I think it did it just as well as some of the other games that do it. Maybe not this, as good as Arkham, but you know, it was one of the better examples of it. Um, but what got me over all the similarities to other games was its nemesis system where 
all the enemies you fight had distinct names and personalities. That's and cool. Could, I like that. You could follow them through the game and they could follow you through the game. So if you fail to kill one of them, when you respawn, they'll remember you and they'll taunt you and they'll have leveled up. So it's like an extra challenge. So that was really cool. And I wish more games ripped that off. <laughs> uh, but this is the sequel, Shadow of War, which I never played. I wanted to play, but if memory serves me correct, this game was marred with a lot of microtransactions in the beginning. And like Battlefront 2 at launch levels of offensive microtransactions. Right. So I think they've cleaned that up since then. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm willing to give this game a shot, especially because I'm not paying for it. It's part of my PlayStation Plus subscription. True. So that that could be cool to say. Hollow um, Knight now is a very good game that uh, people people revere it as one of the best Nintendo Switch games yes. on the system. Uh, mm. I think it's up there. It's very good. Uh, people people put this head to head with games like Celeste. I like yeah. Celeste better because it's more linear. This is a uh, uh, more like a Metroidvania. That doesn't mean it's worse or it's bad. It's just I prefer a more linear experience than a Metroidvania right. experience. Uh, this game also gets pretty damn hard. Um, but now you could try it for. I mean, you could play the whole thing for free if you have PlayStation Plus. Um, but if you'd rather it on the Switch, you could try it on PlayStation for two seconds and then buy it on the Switch if you'd rather have it on yeah. the Switch. Um, uh, but there's supposed to be a new one coming out. Silk Song. I don't think they ever okay. put a date on it. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so those are the, the two main PlayStation Plus games that you get for PS4. However, mm. yes. on November 12th, if you get a PlayStation 5, you can also get included in this bug snacks. Yeah! It, specifically, it's I guess there's also a PS4 version of bug snacks, but if you get a PS5 and you're a PS Plus member, you get the PS5 version of bug snacks included in PS Plus. Yeah, baby. And and, and that's day and date. That's the day, day the PS5 yes. comes out. Hell yeah, yes. baby. Not only that, uh, this offer lasts for more than a month. So usually the these games are only for a month. Uh, Bug Snacks will be available from November 12th to January 4th. Damn. Yeah. I guess because there really won't be that many PlayStation 5 games they can give away for free just yet. But Holy hell. Th I mean, this was the game that like when they showed the, the first trailer with all the PlayStation 5 launch games... This was the game that instantly be became a meme, mostly due to the song, but also because the gameplay looks really cute and interesting. And, and so wacky and that, weird, and there's a lot yeah. of questions everybody has. So the fact that like they're just giving it to you for free right out the gate is... real. This is in addition to all the PS4 games you're going to get for free if you're a PS Plus member. So and you I, have a PS5. I, I need a PS5 game that is going to give me all of the technical, you know, like I want to be able to get the most out of my PS5 the second I have it in my hands. I want to test it out and see what's so great about it, you know? Right. This is not that game. No. However, this is a game that I definitely want to play. Yeah, this will be, you know, because what was it? When the PS4 came out, you had games like Infamous Second Son and Killzone Shadowfall. Those are like the technical marvels. Those really pushed you know, the polygons and the limits of the PS4 at the time and whatnot. But all everyone ever talked about from the launch was Resogun. <laughs> yes. This could very well be the PS5 launches Resogun. Because, yes, there's going to be, you know, Spider-Man Miles Morales and, you know, all these other really cool, really advanced games. But people are going to be talking about bug snacks for the next, like, year. You know... Uh, Octodad wasn't a PS4 launch title, but it was very close to launch. Mm -hmm. And I remember that being one of the first games that I played on, on PS4. Yeah. I remember also uh, Drive Club was a, supposed to be a PlayStation 4 launch title. Um, and then they moved it to a PlayStation Plus game for PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. 
then it kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed until finally like some version of it came out um i hope that's not indicative of what's going to happen to bug snacks i don't think it is but there is always that like specter hanging over uh the head of something like this you know what i mean because right. like this is this is the first game Sony is going to release for their new system for free with PlayStation Plus. So are they doing it because they have faith in this game or are they doing it because they don't really have faith in this game but get it out to enough people see what happens? I feel like PlayStation is really good at um, seeing an indie game and the potential in an indie game Mm -hmm. and giving it as much push as possible. Like uh, Rocket League, I think that wasn't that the first PlayStation Plus title? No, Rocket League debuted first as a PlayStation Plus title. Right, but wasn't I thought yeah. that was the first PlayStation Plus title? No, no, no. All PlayStation right, well, Plus like was existed in the PS3 days. True. So Rocket League debut uh, that was the first game to debut as a PlayStation Plus title. Right. Um, and it was free, you know, for PlayStation Plus, and that gave it a huge push. Uh, mm-hmm. since then you have games like, uh, Fall Guys coming out as a PlayStation Plus title. Yeah. Um, cause they saw the potential in that and that was, it ended up being a huge game. Uh, again, we're going to, that, that's Bug Snacks. Bug Snacks is the PS4 yeah. free friggin' launch title or PS5 free launch title. That's a big deal. That, that's, I, I think Sony, uh, Sony's helping indies by giving them that sort of push. There must be a lot of uh, like we don't know exactly how much developers get out of a PlayStation Plus game, uh, but they must. It must be a great deal for them. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we also have Xbox. Yeah. Um, and spoiler alert: uh, they lost the month. <laughs> <laughs> um, right up front, they have not announced any xbox series games with gold that probably won't come until a little bit later um so you're still only getting xbox one or xbox 360 original xbox games and this month on the xbox one for the entire month of november you get aragami shadow edition and from november 16th to december 15th you get swim sanity I have not heard of either of these games. Uh, I've heard of Aragami. Uh, that game looks really good, and I do want to try that game out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just it, like it, the picture. it's a shinobi type game, like like a three D okay. shinobi type game. Okay, I can get behind that. Yeah, uh, that game looks good. The other yeah. games you can just burn in a fire. <laughs> well, all right. So, and then of course you have on uh, backwards compatible games, which you can play on the Xbox One. Uh, from November 1st to the 15th, you get Full Spectrum Warrior, which is an original Xbox title. And from November 16th to the 30th, you get Lego Indiana Jones. Now, because I am old, I remember when Full Spectrum Warrior came out, and there was a lot of hype and acclaim surrounding that game because it looked like a typical you know, military shooter of the time, like a Call of Duty or Medal of Honor or whatnot. But it was a tactical game. And from what I remember of the reviews and the reception of it, it was a very good tactical game. Like, it wasn't just a run and gun. It made you stop. It made you think about what you're doing, kind of like the way, like, a real soldier would in battle. I think I actually have this game for some reason. Like, oh, I remember this. this. Yeah. I remember this. So, and then, of course, Lego Indiana Jones. It's a Lego game based on, you know, the Indiana Jones trilogy. As we all know, Indiana Jones is only three movies, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, and The Last Crusade. That's it. Nothing else. Um, and this is the video game uh, f- version of, of that based in Legos. And fun fact, this and its sequel are the only two HD Indiana Jones games that have been released. <laughs> that's pretty sad it's very sad the most recent indiana jones game to come out that's not lego based is indiana jones and the staff of kings from like 2010 2011 i want to say and that was a wii and playstation 2 game 
Damn. So Disney, I don't know what you're doing with the Indiana Jones franchise, but start making some games because I think people would much rather play that than see 80 year old Harrison Ford try to raid a tomb one more time. You are a fan of Indiana Jones games. Yes, I have a lot of them because I meant to do this a while ago. And then, of course, you know, I had a kid, but I wanted to like go through them all and try to find the best one because Indiana Jones of like all the movie franchises should be a big video game franchise because it has all of the elements to be a great video game series, especially when games like Uncharted and Tomb Raider rip it off wholesale and are fantastic in their own ways so that's that's where i am with indiana jones so uh yeah not a good showing from xbox this month however i wonder if they're gonna drop gold entirely because a lot they if if you just get game pass you that's so much more of like games with gold isn't really a big deal anymore if you're gonna have game pass right and, and i think because they recently stopped selling year-long subscriptions to Xbox Live Gold. Right. Like, if you want it, you have to buy it, you know, either month-to-month month or within three-month chunks or buy Game Pass Ultimate. They know that the better value is buying the the whole shebang, but they also right. know they could upcharge you for it. But I think, too, because Games with Gold serves a different market than game pass in the long run because game pass is really for like you know the people who you know want to game all the time so they need like a constant flow of games readily available to them game like games with gold is more for you know the casual gamer who maybe only games once in a while and we'll, you know, we'll have an extra treat every month, maybe like a game that's interesting to them. So, so, you so know, they can jump the, in and play. That's the thing that I think is is uh, bad for games with gold because uh, the people who uh, are more casual and don't play too often, they don't even look at the games with gold. And that's why we talk about this stuff so much because we right. feel like nobody knows about these free games. Uh, I feel like that's a sort of like games with gold is in such a middle ground that people are either not going to pay attention at all and just have Xbox live and play their call of duties and their Madden's online, or yeah. they're going to have game pass. So like these games that are trickling out in the middle, I feel like it's just not even a thing that uh, we should worry about on, on Xbox for PlayStation. Sure. They should keep doing it because I don't think they're going to have yeah. a game pass competitor anytime soon. They're trying. I mean, there's PlayStation now, but I don't think anybody likes it. <laughs> well, they have that's they have an initiative to try to have something that's similar to a Game Pass. And did they call it PlayStation right. Now? Is it called PlayStation Now? I, yeah, PlayStation Now has been around for years. Yeah, but yeah, but with PlayStation Five, they they announced that they're going to have something similar to Game Pass. Like like PlayStation Now is streaming stuff. Yeah, that's what G Game Pass pretty much is. Pretty much. Yeah, because now they're all because they're also now rolling XCloud into Game Pass. Correct. So it's you know PlayStation no. Now and Game Pass are basically competitors. PlayStation Plus Collection, that's what it's called. But that's different because you don't need because that's not streaming. Right. That's but just I, basic, that's that's just basically fifty extra games to your PlayStation Plus account. Yes, but this is the competitor to Game Pass. This is Sony's competitor to Game Pass. All of the collection of games that you get for getting the Game Pass subscription, Sony's like, we can try. We don't have the streaming done like well yet, as good as Microsoft does, but we can try to give you some games. But even still, because on Game Pass, on PlayStation Now, you can download the games to your hard drive instead of streaming them. At least yeah. the, the PlayStation 4 games you can't. You could do that on Game Pass too, at least yeah, on PC. So that, no, you can do that on Xbox One as well. So as long as mm -hmm. it's not an X Cloud game, that's what I'm. That's why I'm saying Game Pass and PlayStation Now are more compatible than you know the PlayStation Plus Instant Collection and Game Passes. I I wait. 
PlayStation okay. Now is only streaming. Not only streaming. So PlayStation Now, it's, you know, what is it? It's $10 a month, and you get access to a library of PS2, PS3, and PS4 games. Right. Of those collections, you can download PlayStation 4 games to your hard drive rather than stream them. Okay. And as long as that carries over to PlayStation 5, it will pretty much be PlayStation's answer to Game Pass. I, I don't think they're doing that. I think they're turning that into PlayStation Plus Collection. I th- I'm i pretty sure that's a separate thing. I'm well, pretty sure PlayStation Plus Collection is separate from PlayStation Now. It's just if you have a PlayStation Plus account, you uh-huh. get all these extra games immediately. All right, well, you know what? Let's read up about PlayStation Plus Collection. At PS5 console launch, we are pleased to add new benefits to your PlayStation Plus membership at no additional cost. This includes recently announced PlayStation Plus Collection. PlayStation Plus members will be able to enjoy a special new offering on the PlayStation 5 console, the PlayStation Plus Collection. PS5 console owners with PlayStation Plus will be able to redeem and play a a curated library of PS4 games that defined the generation, like Batman Arkham Knight, Bloodborne, Fallout 4, God of War, Monster Hunter, World, Persona 5, and more. The PlayStation Plus Collection will be available on November 12th when the PS5 console launches in US, Canada, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and November 19th, when the PS5 console launches everywhere else. Uh, here are the games. There are the games. The PlayStation Plus collection will be an added benefit to existing PS4 benefits that the PlayStation Plus members receive for a single subscription price. No additional membership fee required. Once you redeem a game from the PlayStation Plus collection, you can keep the game as long as you are an active PlayStation Plus member. PS4 games redeemed from the PlayStation Plus collection and played on the PS5 console will see benefits such as increased loading speed and improved or more stable frame rates, such uh, with the PS5's Game Boost star, 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 star. Also, as seen in our user experience store, Game Help, blah, 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 garbage, garbage. So so basically, this is what I've been saying. The PlayStation Plus collection is a part of your PlayStation Plus account. It has nothing to do with PlayStation Now. It has nothing to do with streaming. It's just basically, in addition to bug snacks, PlayStation 5 members also get Bloodborne, Days Gone, Detroit, God of War, Infamous, all these other games included in the price of their PlayStation Plus subscription. What I'm trying to say is that they're going to stop caring about PlayStation Now. And they're going to push PlayStation uh, Plus Collection harder. And that's going to be their version of Game Pass instead of PlayStation Now. Because PlayStation Now is a failure. I see. I don't think so. Because if right now Game Pass has a lot of great buzz, especially with the streaming aspect of it. And you Mm -hmm. got people like Google with Stadia and now Amazon with a name I already forgot. Um so Sony is going to want to have a streaming service like that ready and able to go. And so I feel like they're probably going to push PlayStation now even harder this generation, maybe not as hard as Xbox is going to push game pass, but they're going to definitely push a lot harder to show people that you can play PlayStation games anywhere, you know, be it on your PC, on your PlayStation five, um, or on your Android phone. Mm-hmm. So. I, that, I feel like that's too many services. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. You got too many things going on. They got to yeah. simplify it. One's going to get yeah. rolled into the other. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. Will, is, can you see my screen? Is it updating for you? Is it frozen on the wolf guy? Uh, hold on. Uh, you see me moving I around? can see... Yeah, I can see you moving around in right. your OBS window thing. Good. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about Nintendo Direct that happened last week. But first, we got yes. some Super Chats. Uh, where right. did we leave off? Uh, seven. 2107. Thank you for the four months. Need to set an alarm or something to remind to renew these. Hi, guys. By the way, it's 3 a.m. here. Hello, seven. Hello wake up um, go to bed also you don't need to set an alarm just whenever just, just whenever you see a live stream just check the little check the little dude there 
the little uh, subscription thing and see if it says resubscribe or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Rock and Val, thanks for the 18 months. Also, thanks for gifting us up to Porkchop, who now has five months. Thank you so much. There you go. And Luke Antone, thank you for the 22 months. Sorry I'm late. What's the new late fee? Uh, $14. Yeah. I because unlike reasonable. Pokemane, we don't cap our donations. Give us no. all of your money. Give me. I actually like that. I I <laughs> wish I could cap the tiers on uh, on subscriptions because I don't want people to subscribe at tier two or tier three because there's no added benefit at all. Yeah. I think for certain certain things it makes sense and for certain streamers it makes sense so i'm yeah. yeah i think it you know yeah i don't want tier two or tier three subscriptions keep that i want your twitch prime give me your twitch prime uh anyway nintendo direct here we go yes uh so you have the the order yes so i wrote can... down the the order of uh the games were in, uh revealed Okay, so Bravely so Default 2. There. Yes. You know, I'm just gonna... I don't think this article has everything. I thought it did. Oh, wait. Here it is. Bravely Default 2. Wow, look at it. It's so cool. Yeah, it's so brave. And by default. The JRPG sequel, which is really a threequel, was originally supposed to be out sometime this year, but alas, it's joined a number of games that have slipped to 2021 as the ongoing pandemic continues to make developing games more complicated than usual. Now, f new footage of the game showed players fighting enemies called Asterisk Bearers, which seems all too fitting. What? Okay, that's it. Uh, was this game in development for like a billion years? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I think there was Bravely Default and then Bravely Second, and then I think Bravely Default 2 is supposed to come out like not too long after that, but it just kept getting pushed. This game does not look like it's been in development for a billion years. <laughs> this game looks like a freaking mobile game. Well, to be fair, the game, the series started as a 3DS series, so mm -hmm. they probably just you know ported all those assets over and then upscaled them. That's the thing about this weird hybrid world we're living in, is that like... Yeah. Games like Bravely Default and Pokemon are used to being able to have small experiences, and now they're being forced onto a home console hybrid, mm -hmm. and people are mad when they look like mobile games still. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, cool, I don't... A lot... Listen, this Nintendo Direct, not the best stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> not anything that made me, you know, super excited. There, there were two things that I thought were really cool, um, but we'll get to those when we get to that. All right, next, a story of seasons. Yes. Cool. Uh, the latest in the Farming Sim series, previously known as Harvest Moon, is Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive, and will come out on March 23rd of next year. I, th I so thought this giant Gundam thing was part of Story of Seasons. <laughs> So I thought I thought this was Harvest Moon, and that at the very end it said Story of Seasons, and I was like, "What?" I thought Harvest Moon was a completely different series. So did I. I did not know that it turned into, or like the I guess the series is known as Story of Seasons, and Harvest Moon is just a couple of games in the Story of Seasons series. The series is called Harvest Moon. As far as I... Because there's so many games that are Harvest Moon, blah, blah, blah. Well, because here's the thing. Because I'm on the Wikipedia page for Harvest Moon, the Super Nintendo game, the original. Now I am too. But but if you scroll down to the bottom in the little box with all the games, it's called the Story of Seasons video games. I don't see that box. All the way at the oh, bottom of the page. I see at the top for the series, see Story of Seasons. Yeah. Wow. Is this a new... Th Wait, Harvest Moon series redirects here for the separate series, which began in 20 2007. See Harvest Moon 2007. For the first game released under this title, see Story of Seasons video game. So the first... Wait. Okay, so the first well, Story well, of Seasons was in f 2014 in Japan. So, okay. So, st uh, Story of Seasons was titled harvest moon 
between 1996 and 2013. Right. And then in 2014, they changed the name of the series to Story of Seasons. I know what happened. Because I remember at E3 one year when I was there, they they were showing off a Harvest Moon game, and I was like, this looks weird. Harvest Moon, I think the license was picked up by a separate company. And they were developing all these weird Harvest Moon games. Mm. So I guess the original rights holder, Marvelous, or Nintendo, yeah. or somebody, wait, wait. Pre- decided... Wait, wait. Previously, Natsume published the series Bokujo Monogatari. Bokujo Monogatari. Gatari. I nailed it. Uh, in North America under Hi. the title Harvest Moon. <laughs> However, the developer, original publisher, and owner of the series, Marvelous, decided to have their own American division, Exceed Games, take over North American distribution in 2014. Exceed, However, yes. However, due to Natsume keeping the rights to the Harvest Moon name, the latest titles in the series were rebranded Story of Seasons, while Natsume began to produce their own series under the Harvest Moon name. There you go. We solved the mystery. We are better than the Hardy Boys uh, <laughs> when it comes to detective work. B- bunch of bunch of pansies they are. TLDR, there was some rights issues. And now... The real Harvest Moon games are called Story of Seasons. Yes. And you might see some more Harvest Moon games, but they're going to be from a wacky developer. Um, anyway, cool. You can uh, marry people in this game. <laughs> yeah. So Harvest Moon is what inspired uh, Stardew Valley. Yes. They, they weren't making good Star- uh, Harvest Moon games at the time, so... Probably because they didn't know they were called Story of Seasons. <laughs> well, so the developer of Stardew Valley decided I'm just going to make my own then. Yeah. So uh if you want the original Stardew Valley, here you go. What's next? We got Surviving uh, the Aftermath. And all all Kotaku says is apocalyptic coping game Surviving the Aftermath is coming in spring of 2021. Apparently this is a port of a pre-existing game. Is it going to show a trailer? Oh, this is a pretty uh, artwork we got here. No, no trailer. Oh, is this like an RTS? It looks like an RTS. Yeah. It's a post-apocalyptic uh, survival colony builder. Strategy simulation. Get out of yeah. here! Next Not we got... For us, dumb boys. Immortals Phoenix Rising. It's pronounced Phoenix. Um, this is basically Ubisoft's uh, Breath of the Wild game. Oh, cool. Uh, I think it's out on other systems, and I think people don't hate it. <laughs> but it's everyone's like, yeah, this is basically just Breath of the Wild. I don't see a Metacritic. Ooh, it's on Stadia. There you go. Oh, yeah. I, I see. I see what they're getting at. Okay, cool. If you want more Breath of the Wild, there you go. We also yeah. have uh, Bakugan, Champions of Vestoria. This is the only game that Nintendo is making this year at all. Forget Paper Mario and the other one, Animal Crossing. <laughs> uh, I guess they don't have anything about Bakugan. They straight up don't care about Bakugan. Yeah, I mean Bakugan Switch. This was the game that they had announced, uh, and I don't know, there was a period of time when this was the only game we knew about coming out this year. Yeah. But anyway, here it is. It looks pretty cool. It's uh, yeah. Nintendo published, I think. Oh, yeah, no, I think Warner Way Brothers Forward Interactive. Is... Isn't Way Forward developing it though? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what do you call that? Uh, second party. Mm, no, because the second party is independent, but they are, have, uh, uh, what you call it, the platform holder is a is an investor in the company. Uh, Way Forward Technologies is an American independent devel- game developer and publisher based in uh, Valencia, California. Uh, okay, looks like they develop for everything. Yeah. 
So this is straight up a third party, though. Yes. Oh. I'm dropping shit. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Ah, oh, good. All right, next up we got Griftlands, Griftlands Switch the Edition. Deck, deck building roguelikes uh, Griftlands will be on the Switch sometime next summer. This is already oh. out on uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Deck building? I didn't see that at all in the trailer. I thought this was that like diplomacy game where you try to like uh, talk people out of fighting with you, and then sometimes you can't. You have to fight them. Nope, that was a different game altogether. This, I believe, is from the people who made. Yeah, it's from the people who made Mark of the Ninja, Shank, and Don't Starve. That's weird. Yeah. Don't Starve makes sense, but Mark of the Ninja and Shank that doesn't make any sense. Kinda, because it's like animated. It's got that animated style. All right, we also got Tropic Six. Everybody knows Tropics. Tropico. Sorry, I was I meant to write Tropico. Oh, but yeah, you know. Tropico. It's that, <laughs> that weird uh, Cuban dictator simulator that just keeps coming out <laughs> every few years. People like this game. Yeah. And now it's on the Switch. Yep. Uh, cool. That's another strategy game we're never going to play. Yep. Hitman 3 Cloud Edition. This is when we start to get into the weird stuff. Yes. Uh, uh, this one is a shocker. Out on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC this January. Agent 47 will now be playing Dress Up on the Switch as well, thanks to streaming. So we've seen in Japan, at least, uh, cloud editions of Resident Evil 7 and one of the Assassin's Creed games where you bet you stream the game over the internet. All, as long as all you need is a good internet connection, you could play this technically advanced game that the Switch couldn't run on its own. Now we're starting to see that on this side of the world and Hitman is not the first game to do this. Well, we'll get to the first game in a second, but they announced two games in this direct that are Switch Cloud games. Right. And I think we're going to start to see a trend here, Bob. So you I said, think this is going to be the new thing. You said January, but uh, it's interesting to note that the Switch eShop site says to be announced for the date for Hitman. The article says January. Have you played Hitman 3? Uh, it's not out yet. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I thought this... No, no. Hitman. I played the first Hitman. Well, the first of this style of Hitman. And I, and I haven't played Hitman 2 yet. Um... But yeah, Hitman 3, which is the third in this series of Hitman games, is coming out in January for all the other systems. Oh, okay. So the release date is January 20th. Uh, so that's why, I guess, the Switch version says to be dated. Uh, and it's yeah. and the article's just saying it's going to be around the same time as launch yeah. for the other consoles. Cool. I might give that a shot. I, I've never played a Hitman game before, but they're right up my alley. Yeah, uh, especially the most recent style, I think... You know, if you have the patience for it, it's definitely worth checking out. Mm -hmm. So now here's the next one Control, which I have, but you have my copy. Yes. <laughs> uh, Control. Oh, I lost it. Remedies Paranormal Office Thriller is excellent, but struggling to run well even on PS4 and Xbox One. It makes sense that in order to get it on the Switch, the studio will, would opt to stream it. While Assassin's Creed Odyssey and a few other games have been streamed to Switch in Japan, this is the first time Nintendo's brought this option to North America. And Control is out right now. So if you want to play Control on your Switch, as long as you're connected to the internet, you can do so. I want to try this for two reasons. One, I want to play Control. And mm -hmm. two, I want to try streaming on the Switch. Yeah. Uh, the problem is I feel like an asshole buying it twice. <laughs> Wait, I free mean, download? Really? It says free download. Okay. It's interesting. Let me move this here so I can type in my password. It, it, it might make you buy it in an in-app purchase, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so is this how Switch games that run on cloud 
work even in Japan. I I, I didn't try the other like the Resident Evil or, yeah. or or Assassin's Creed that came out in Japan. You can only download a free launcher application to test the game for a limited amount of time. This game uses cloud streaming technology and you require a persistent high-speed internet connection to play the game. If your internet connection becomes unstable, the service will disconnect with, after a few minutes. Please use the free launcher application to test the availability and quality of the service for your region. A Nintendo Switch account is required to access the cloud service to access the game after the free trial. This free launcher application and the purchase and the purchasable access pass are required. Pricing can be found on the Nintendo Switch on the Nintendo eShop page for the access pass once the five minute trial has been successfully completed. Okay. That sounds like a lot of work. No, it's just it's just download the game. You have mm-hmm. five minutes to play it and make sure you can play it well on your okay. internet connection. So wherever you feel like you're going to be playing control the most, go play it there and maybe play it in portable mode on Wi-Fi just to really test your limits. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely going to do that. Even if I don't intend to buy it, I want to just try it. And you could try it for free. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. S- Solidite in the chat says it's a 10 minute demo. So that means the Nintendo Switch oh, page that's lied. That's even better. That's cool. I encourage everybody to try this out. Yeah. It's uh, freaking free. And it's so, I don't know if you want to jump ahead to one of the other stories we had because it's along the same topic of cloud gaming on Switch. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's do yeah. it. So, and we'll go back to the Nintendo Direct in a second, but. Uh, in light of the news that we're getting two games to the Switch that run on cloud gaming, it was reported that a Resident Evil 3 cloud version graphic was found through Switch game streaming service. Uh, Earlier today, a streaming version of Control was released for the Switch, and while waiting in line to play video games is a bummer, the service has a queue if there are too many people trying to play at once. Uh, this downtime gave folks an opportunity to poke around in the streaming services launcher and uncover a very different game in the process, the Resident Evil 3 remake. Kotaku was first made aware of these details thanks to a reset era thread published about an hour ago. This article was released on the 28th. Uh, And we have since been able to independently verify that Resident Evil 3 cloud version image, that the Resident Evil 3 cloud version image below exists on the website used by Nintendo partner Ubits Game Cloud to facilitate cloud-based gaming on the Switch. And there's the there's the image right there. Wow. Uh, rumors of a streamable Resident Evil 3 have been floating around on the internet since earlier this year. Industry analyst Daniel Ahmad mentioned in March that a cloud version was being explored after leftover files in Resident Evil 3 demo pointed towards a Switch release. Uh, these new details indicate that uh, Ubitus, Ubitus, uh, which also helped the cloud-based Switch versions of Resident Evil 7, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Control, has been involved in the exploration in some capacity. Kotaku reached out to Capcom and Nintendo for more information. So Ubitus Cloud Gaming is, or Game Cloud, is their streaming service. I part, guess so. Their streaming partner. Yes. Oh, boy. Uh, it doesn't mention anything about Hitman in there as well, but I'd imagine if the other games are using them, Hitman probably uses them in some capacity as well. Just partner with Microsoft, dude. You know <laughs> they're down, and they need in on that Japanese market. Yeah. And you're that in, dude. You're it. Just do it. So I'm on their website. Ubitus? And Ubitus, yeah. And under their Game Cloud mm-hmm. um, page, uh, it doesn't list the games that are th- that are available, but there's a graphic. And I can see in the graphic, Devil May Cry 4, Ghostbusters, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Resident Evil 5, a bunch of Capcom games. So where do you see the, uh, where do you see that? Uh, ubitus.net slash en slash ugamecloud.html um, oh I see the graphic now it's up here yeah yeah there, there's a bunch of stuff Dead Rising wow baseball some sort of 
Slugger's <laughs> little slugger baseball. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we'll be seeing a lot of this come into this, like it, hitting the switch. Because, I mean, it makes sense for, for games like Control. And, and honestly, um, it's going to be... I mean, I, I haven't played the Ubitus Game Cloud version of streaming. <laughs> yeah. But stuff like Game Pass, dude, it feels like you're just playing the game on your system. Like, it's... Yeah. it's no one's gonna... A, a large majority of people aren't gonna be able to tell the difference. So, uh, if you're trying to stay out of budget and all you have is a Switch and you want to play stuff like this, this is, a, I think, yeah. a great option for a lot of people. Especially with the next gen of games coming out, you know, this is a great way for the Switch to stay competitive uh, with those systems, still get the same types of games. You just have to, you know, make sure there's an internet connection, but you'll still be able to play them. I, I mean, this is the whole sell for the Switch, is that you can play whatever games you want to play. You get the benefit of portability at the cost of some quality. And in right. cases like Doom, you're playing it at less than 720p and you know they, all the textures look weird, but it still plays really good. In the case of Control, you're tethered to an internet connection. So there's a trade-off, but the trade-off is uh, convenience. And I think that yeah. that's great for a lot of people. And if you have a bad internet connection, that's not great for you. You should get... Yeah like an actual console all right uh i'm gonna try that out that sounds really cool um yeah. no more heroes 3 everybody's favorite yes no more heroes 3 is coming sometime next year grasshopper manufacturers idiosyncratic hack and slasher was also supposed to come out this year but was delayed to 2021 due to the pandemic in the meantime the studio announced that no more heroes one and two will be available on the Switch starting today. And they are available on the Switch right now. They are both 10% off. Damn. How, so how much are they? They're uh, $18 each. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. I only ever played Travis Strikes Again. Which is not a No More Heroes game. <laughs> it's also it wasn't that great. I didn't like yeah. it a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't like it. Which one did I play at PAX? Was it that? I think it was that. My, yeah, I think it was that. And then I uh, you met was Suda forced to meet Suda. And I was like, I, I'm i sorry. I, I I have nothing to say. Can I get a picture? And they looked at me weird. Yeah. They like tried to force me into interviewing him. That's... And I was like, I have nothing to... I don't know who he is. <laughs> you know, it's, it's weird that they would do that. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the same time, as a as a video game uh, person on YouTube, you're supposed to know everything about weird auteur Suda51 and have at least 40 questions for him about all the weirdness in Killer7 and uh, No More Heroes and Shadow of the Damned and all those other games that he made. Yeah, uh, so the cheerleader um, one. The cheerleader one, which I can't remember the name of. Oh, with the headless boyfriend on the yeah. chainsaw cheerleader thing? Yeah. I'm looking at his list of games now. I have played zero of these games. I think I've only played Killer7, and I don't know if that's a good game. <laughs> I've heard of Killer7. Killer7, we have it. It's it's so weird. <laughs> you walk with the A button. That is weird. It's very oh, weird. Lollipop Chainsaw. That was it. That's the game. Can I yeah. show it without getting... Uh, canceled on twitch yeah so i uh, yeah i haven't played any of these games frog minutes what's frog minutes can i show this <laughs> what is that no thank you all right well anyway part-time ufo this looks like a good game yes uh how Laboratories work sim where you play as a UFO trying to make it in the gig economy by doing odd jobs first came to iOS back in 2018. Ooh. It has all the color and charm of a Game Boy Advance game 
And the Switch version looks like it has a few extra bells and whistles, including co-op by passing around the Joy-Con and some Kirby-related Easter eggs. It goes up on the Nintendo Switch uh, sometime today. So it is out right now. It is $4 on the iPhone. And it, it is. is how much on the Switch? Uh, hold on. I got it right here. I got it, I got it right here. It is nine dollars. That's the switch tax, baby. They really gotta let up on that switch tax, cause I'm I see Burnout Paradise on sale on the Xbox One for five dollars all the time, mm. and it is currently forty on the Switch. You know, I I I don't like. I, I mean, I see games that are mobile first and then they get ported to the Switch and I'd rather play them on mobile because a lot of times they're built for mobile. Yeah. It feels like a sort of like, you know, like, I mean, like a port for the Switch. So, yeah, especially if it's cheaper on mobile, I feel like this game might be a better mobile situation. Probably. Although it's how, so they're probably better at optimizing for the Switch. Ooh, there is multiplayer. Yeah. That might not be on the phone. Uh, this game looks great, though. I'm very interested. Yeah. Uh, last, they showed more Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity Will. Yes, Bob. I played it because the demo's out. How you is can it? play the demo right now. The demo's like a little over two hours. Oh, wow. You get like a lot of stuff. I got to yeah. be honest. It's freaking great. Yeah. I, I am not a Dynasty Warrior. I haven't played any Dynasty Warriors games. I'm also not a big Zelda fan. But I really liked this. I, I liked the, the combat in it. It was really cool. I mean, you're just mowing down like large swaths yeah. of enemies. Um, and the frame rate like dips a lot like every now and then because there's a lot of characters mm -hmm. on screen. It handles it pretty well for what it is, though. And yeah. all the abilities of all the different characters are really cool. Impa has this cool thing where uh, you can uh, build it up so that you have like shadows of yourself that like attack. Mm -hmm. So you can have like nine characters just fighting at what you know in Shinobi, no, in Ninja Gaiden, you can get an ability that has like a second nin Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. That you can do that, but you can okay. do it like nine times. Nice. It's really freaking cool. Uh I might actually play the game. There you go. I might actually get the game and play it. Set to launch next month on November 20th, Dynasty Warriors style prequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of those Nintendo games that just sort of announced out of nowhere last month. Now players will get the chance to test it out before release and have their save carry over to the rest of the game. So, yeah, in addition to this being uh, another Hyrule Warriors game, it is the canonical prequel to Breath of the Wild. The first yep. game was like in this weird like offshoot like side story non-canon type thing but this is actually takes place 100 years before the events of breath in the wild so it basically tells the story of how calamity ganon took over so at first uh i mean at first i was like that's pretty cool because i do want to hear about this time yeah because that's interesting uh and then i was like this kind of feel like i don't know like it it's kind of like a pre like a star wars prequel thing it's like one of those things right. where maybe we shouldn't have heard we shouldn't see it maybe we should just have heard of it yeah because they're always talking about the clone wars is this like mystical time that like nobody really knows about and then right. they show it and it like ruins the mystique um oh well say that to the people who actually watch clone wars and they'll tell you it's the best star wars thing ever so. yeah yeah psychopaths yeah yeah i wouldn't listen to their opinion on anything else <laughs> One of these days, as, as soon as my daughter is old enough to watch TV, I'm going to watch every episode of Clone Wars with her because I know she'll like it. Oh, the my show. Daughter, God damn it. The show, yes. The yeah. show, no, I'm the... sure, is great. Yeah, no, that's what I'm talking about. Not the two-hour TV pilot that they tried to pass off as a theatrical movie. Yes, that's what I'm... Yeah. What... Uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> anyway... Uh, I get what you're saying that sometimes you know a prequel is hit and, is hit or hit or miss because you know how the story is going to end how is there supposed to be any drama to it and a lot of times by re showing you what happened it removes a lot of the mystery and the fun and the wonder of the thing you like in the first place 
Right. And and this, I was thinking, I was mulling over my thoughts while I was streaming it. Um, yeah. Like, like I, when I imagined this time period in my head, I pictured like a thriving Hyrule, you know? Yeah. Because uh, this is 100 years before Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this kind of just looks like Breath of the Wild, you know? Yeah. Uh, but then I think about uh, the prequels, the Star Wars prequels, and I'm like, those look vastly different than actual Star Wars, and it's a completely different tone because of it, and maybe that's a bad yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know, but the game plays really cool. Uh, there's actual voice acting, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, but uh you don't get much of the story in the demo so i don't want to sit here and crap all over my own speculations of the story the gameplay yeah. is great and that's all that really matters so i recommend everybody try it because it's free it's a free demo and it's like two hours long so it's worth it uh that's it that's all that they talked about yeah. on the nintendo direct uh it was a it was a, they did say it was a mini direct um so there were wasn't going to be much announced um what they did announce there were some big announcements some not so big announcements i think i think the most surprising thing was the control and hitman coming to switch yes. uh, other than that like yeah we knew age of calamity was coming it was cool that we got to see more um it's cool we got news on bravely default no more heroes 3 it's nice that they're bringing the first two to the switch um yeah, otherwise it was basically just seeing another bog standard direct. Nothing nothing too exciting. I think the biggest problem is like there's a lot of cool like JRPGs and Japanese stuff that uh doesn't mm -hmm. resonate with me. Uh a Gaijin. Yeah. So for me, the things that really uh look cool are games like the cloud version of Hitman 3 and and Control and the Hyrule Warriors demo. Also part time yeah. UFO. I'm glad that 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 was in there i you know I, it, back in the day you know back in the heyday of the switch when i would see mm -hmm. like uh some indie platformers that's what really got me going and we haven't seen a lot of indie platformers lately it's been a while yeah. so we still need to know what freaking uh yacht club games is doing yeah kind of dragging can't their feet over there on shadow knight alone yeah on shovel knight alone they, they have a like three Shovel Knight games that aren't out yet that are announced that aren't out yeah. yet um, or two or three and uh, we got Cyber Shadow that's nowhere to be found yeah so uh, we're waiting otherwise that was an okay direct it was a mini so whatever uh, mm -hmm. I'm sh did they say it was the last mini yes of the year or at all I'm probably of the year does Kotaku have anything to say about that? No, but I, they did say it was the last mini of the year. Today's mini direct, which Nintendo says will will be its last of the year. Okay, so the last mini or the last direct? See, that's that's where we run into trouble here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because if it's the last mini, then that could mean that we're getting more. We're getting at least one more. We're getting something else. If it's the last direct, that's it. I think Which, it. I think it's the last direct mini, and we could just play it right now and find out. Yeah. I think they say it right in the beginning. They do. Today, we'll continue delivering the latest information on games. From I'm going to talk over it a little bit so we partner. don't get C and D. Yeah. First, here's an update on the latest installment in the Bravely series from Square Enix. Bravely Default 2. You're not going to say it? Please take a look. Did I skip over it? I, th I think we did. Yeah. So. Welcome to our last Nintendo be... Direct Mini Welcome, Partner yeah. Showcase of the Year. There Nintendo Direct stop. Mini Partner Showcase of the Year. Partner Showcase. Yeah. Yes. Because for the most part, these were all like third party games or in the case of, um, you know, Age of Calamity and uh, Part Time UFO, they're Nintendo published games but from outside sources. So we could still get an actual direct. We could still get a direct mini. We just aren't going to get a partner showcase, which right. is fine by me. Also, it's October. Yeah. Who cares? You know, like, or it was October. 
I mean, usually they don't do anything in uh, November and December. Sometimes we get something in December, but it, usually it's not anything. Yeah, especially because, like, the year's over. <laughs> yeah, so, like, all the holiday stuff we should know about already. Yeah. Um, even though there's not much from Nintendo this year. There's not much. I mean, really, we're getting the new consoles, but in terms yeah. of games, it's really, it's going to be a lackluster holiday season. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's that. Do we have any notifications here? Uh, we got Sardi with 14 months. Thank you very Thank much. You. And we got Kikoba with 12 months. One year, baby. Baby. Thanks, Kikoba. Thank you. Uh, anybody in the chat here? Oh, look, it's Eddie says those are called neg fans guys the hardcore crazy star wars fans i love star wars but i'm not fond of the of the fans what the people who like the clone wars or the prequels i or was just or just star wars fans in general because yes star wars fans are awful <laughs> i hate I, star wars fans and will is one of the biggest i yeah i when I say Clone Wars, I'm talking about the prequels. I completely f forgot that there's a whole mo like TV series called The Clone Wars. <laughs> I actually I, liked I, the movie, the, uh, the, the Clone movie, Wars movie, the, the animated movie, movie. Okay, but the problem with the movie was that it was literally just a pilot, but they tried to pass it off for the longest time as a big theatrical standalone thing mm -hmm. when it was obvious from watching it, this is supposed to be part of a Saturday morning cartoon. And I it was, I remember coming out of the theater and going, that was pretty good. I didn't say that about any of the prequels. So it must've been something special. <laughs> that I've was a learned, dark time for star Wars. Yes. Uh, I've learned uh, being on the internet that you can reference the original trilogy and clone wars and be fine uh if you reference the prequels you will more than likely just get back memes because <laughs> be fair prequels got some dank memes they got some funny memes to them you mention anything else especially disney era star wars you take your life into your own hands so <sighs> you're an sgw will say, cuck will exactly but i will say this as bad as Star Wars fans are, I think Spider-Man fans are worse. Because what? if you, because if you talk about Spider-Man, but you talk about the wrong Spider-Man, you'll get axes thrown at you. What's the wrong one? That's the thing. You don't know. <laughs> is is it Tobey Maguire? No, he was in the Raimi movies and those are untouchable. Is it Andrew Garfield? No, he didn't get a fair shake. Is it Tom Holland? Probably because he's a whiny little teenager. What? What? So what? Who are the worst fans? We've had this conversation it, before. It, it's a tie between Star Wars fans and Spider Man fans. Really? It really? Yeah. It, spend five minutes on Spider Man Twitter, and you will just you will just see lunacy. You, you know, I saw a Reddit thread about this, and they said the worst fans are Homestuck fans. Homes? I don't even know what that is. It's like an online like web series or something. Okay. It, it, I can't even really explain what it is either, but they have terrible fans apparently. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else. I don't want to say Nintendo fans because I don't think they're that bad. I, I think that they have very strong opinions on some dumb yeah. stuff, but it's usually uh, they, it's usually like a oh shut up type deal. Snyderverse <laughs> fans are very passionate mm -hmm. but they're like they they love man of steel bvs and justice league with all their heart but sometimes that fashion that fashion that passion turns to insanity because they're very quick to like latch on to conspiracy theories about yes you know why why did they change justice league why is ben affleck no longer batman uh you know uh, Aquaman was going to be a dark, gritty slasher movie before Zack Snyder left. Like, no. Aquaman was always going to be directed by James Wan, who directed Furious 7 and directed Aquaman just like he directed Furious 7. It's a big ass cartoon. 
Um, so. Nick T official in the chat says Pokemon Gen Oneers. How dare you say that? Hey man, leave me alone. How dare you say that? Uh, also, I was thinking Rick and there was a port in time when Rick and Morty fans are pretty terrible. Yes. Yes. They, 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 we're kind of past that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think everybody. I think I think Rick and Morty fans expose themselves as the worst fans because usually mm-hmm. Star Wars fans and Spider Man fans confine themselves to uh, Twitter or uh, specific forums or to each other. They don't go out into a McDonald's and cause a scene. Right. So, yeah. All right. What do we got here? Oh, let's talk about uh, the DualSense controller, Will. Yes, Bob, you got some hands-on time with oh, the dual sense. Boy, howdy did I. So I got to try it out. I didn't buy it for myself. Uh I was a little upset that I didn't I didn't pre-order it. It wasn't on the, the pre-order on Amazon was for next week, and it's like or for, for this this week actually. Um so it was it was after it already came out. So I could pre-order on Amazon. I have to actually leave my house to go yeah. get it. I'm not doing that. <laughs> And plus, you know, it's weird that they would release the controller before the system. And, like, they, they kind of released it out of nowhere. Yeah, it, it was weird. Like, I, I mean, the- they, they even showcased it before the system was even announced. They let Jeff Keighley play around with it and yeah. show it on video before the si- before you actually got to see what the system looked like. Yeah. Um, so it's weird. It's weird that they released it like that. Also, it's weird because it doesn't freaking work with anything. However, right. it kind of does. So I got to play around with it, and I thought I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna try it. The first thing I was like, I'm gonna try it on PS4. I don't know what made me think it would work on PS4, uh, but it doesn't work on PS4. Um, I heard that it worked on PS4 remote play, but I was paying the ass to set up, and I was like, you know what? I'd rather do other things. It works on yeah. the Game Pass app, which is cool, but it's all mapped wrong, so that kind of right. sucks. It works on PC, great. So if you want to use it on PC, go nuts. Um, but you don't get a lot of the cool features. And I also tried it with the Nintendo Switch via the 8-bit Do adapter. I also tried it with the Switch Up adapter. Neither worked for whatever reason. But it turns out it works with the stupid 8-bit Do adapter. I don't know what I did that didn't get it to work. It's even in the video, me trying to get it to work. But apparently it works, according to GameSpot and some guy on Twitter. PS5 DualSense controller apparently works with Nintendo Switch. With an adapter, a Twitter user hooked up Sony's new controller to Nintendo Switch console. This adapter right here, this 8-bit do adapter. Uh, PlayStation 5 released in November, and with it, a host of accessories unique to the, the next generation system. What they just That's how, like, how I started my video. The DualSense controller is Sony's first move away from the DualShock labeling and includes new features like haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. One of the DualSense controller's other qualities, however, is that it doesn't work while hooked up to the PS4. Sony's current gen console registers the new controller, but you can't use it to play any games. I actually couldn't get the controller, uh, the console to recognize it at all. I was doing a lot of things wrong, apparently. Uh, it apparently can only be recognized in Bluetooth mode. I tried but even but then, like, yeah. I tried that. I tried plugging it in. It appears that the DualSense controller does work with the Nintendo Switch. However, user Twitter user Broken Games HDR connected the DualSense controller to Nintendo's hybrid console by using an adapter named the 8-bit Do adapter. The third-party software allows players to use their preferred handheld controller with the Nintendo Switch and not be limited to Switch's Pro controller. What do they mean, third-party software? They mean third-party hardware. Or do they mean the software on the 8-bit do adapter? That I mean, if that's the case, then what do I got to do? Here it is working. Uh, I'm going to mute it. When I saw this, I was like, I really hope that's fake. This was like the day I posted my video. But here he is. He's using it. He doesn't show how he got it to work or anything. He just says he used the 8-bit do adapter. In the video Broken Games HDR posted, he successfully uses the DualSense controller to navigate Switch's menu and play a small portion of Mario Kart. So while players can't use the DualSense controller with the PS4, they can certainly try mixing and matching with the Nintendo Switch system. How how extra features like haptic feedback and adaptive triggers work in this scenario is still uncertain as this time. 
I mean, it's a does it work or does it not work situation, and I'm pretty sure they don't work at all. Um, the PS5 doesn't release until November 12th, but some DualSense controllers have been a available early. Developers have wasted no time in getting the new accessory work on other systems like the PC. Shakedown Hawaii's newest patch allows players to use DualSense controllers. Other PlayStation 5 accessories such as the Pulse 3D headset, media remote, and camera will also be available soon. Check our PS5 pre-order guide, blah, blah, blah. That's according to GameSpot. I'll also note that Spawn Wave got the microphone to work in Audacity on his computer. Wow. And it has two mics. One in the front and one in the back for whatever reason. Right. But I'm assuming that the PS5 has some sort of software to uh, to cut out all of the clicks of the controller. Because Audacity yeah. does not have that. So when you're clicking around, you hear everything. <laughs> um, I'll also... I'll pull up my Twitter here because I I quote tweeted and I said, God damn it. <laughs> and then I said, I tried that 8-bit do adapter, I swear. Uh so there's a there was a firmware update for it in September. For what? The 8 bit do adapter. And what I'm is not that up? Any, it, it doesn't say anything about like the dual sense or whatnot, but maybe that was Maybe your firmware isn't so, up to date. So here's what I decided. Like, I uh -huh. I was using it, and I saw that it works for the Xbox Bluetooth controller, DualShock, uh, DualShock 3, DualShock 4. And then I was like, well, this isn't a DualShock 3 or a DualShock 4. Right. So this is a generic Bluetooth controller as far as this thing's concerned. And if right. this doesn't work with generic Bluetooth controllers, then it's just not going to friggin' work. Um. But maybe it does. Maybe it requires that firmware update. Maybe. Uh, where do you see that there was a firmware update? Um, if you go to Apidu's website and you go to support, and then you go to the the uh, adapter, there's two. There's a gray one, which was intended for the PlayStation Classic, and then there's the orange one, which is the classic you know, Nintendo-style one. I have the orange one. But both of them... Yeah, both of them are up to firmware 1.33. And according log. to the update log, came out in September. Added, I mean, support, I added support for SN30 Pro for Android Gamepad. Yeah. Uh, press and hold the pair button about five seconds to the LED uh, for factory settings. Added manual switching function for a switch mode. Added support for APIT do arcade stick. That's it. Uh, in December of last year, they added support for the Xbox One Elite 2. Uh, oh, fix the connectivity issue with 8 do Bluetooth controllers. I got this thing a while ago, so it's probably on a really yeah. old firmware, to be honest. Um, I'd be willing to bet it's a firmware update problem. There but I don't, know. the problem is I don't have the thing anymore. Like, I don't have the dual sense anymore, so I can't even try. Right. right. But even still, like, why would you want to? The thing comes out, like, a week <laughs> anyway. I know. It's kind of useless to get this controller. And also, it's not going to... It's $70, and all of the cool stuff that makes it $70 isn't... You can't do it yet. You can't do any of that stuff yet. Yeah. Uh, here's Ricky Berwick telling uh, me I'm an idiot. Who had one fucking <laughs> job? He's he's not he's not wrong. And then I made a little cute little Say TikTok. something Ooh. I'm giving up I on you. DMCA for this. That's it. That's all I'm playing. But anyway, uh it, according to you, it works on PlayStation 3 now too? Yep. Uh per IGN, the dual sense controller doesn't work natively on the PS4, but curiously, it does on the PS3. Uh, with PS5 peripherals on sale in the U.S., YouTuber Midnight Man, as spotted by VGC, managed to unbox a DualSense and test its features. In the video, we see the PlayStation 4 failing to recognize the DualSense using a USB connection and recognizing a wireless controller in its Bluetooth menu, but not allowing control once connected. However, when connected to a PS3 using a USB controller, the DualSense is recognized and can navigate the, men the console menus. 
Reset Era's Ice Blade has previously said that only the PS button doesn't work when connected to the PS3 in this way, but it can be connected wirelessly too. There's, there is seemingly a workaround for the DualSense on PS4 if you can connect it via USB on a Mac or PC and then use the PS4's remote play function. The controller will function as expected, although it's a pretty roundabout way to, for playing the console. It's perhaps not a surprise that Sony's locking off the DualSense functionality. As we've heard previously, PS5 games will require DualSense to play with PS4 controllers able to connect to the new console but only to play uh, last-gen games. Last week, we learned about the DualSense's accessibility features, including haptic feedback that can be reduced or turned off. Pre-orders are sold out and whatnot. Okay. So so I heard that uh, at the end of the PS3's life cycle, there was an update for it that allowed for generic Bluetooth controllers. And that might be yeah, why this a, is working. There's a surprising amount of random-ass Bluetooth controllers that will work for the PlayStation 3. Mm -hmm. I think most of Ape Adu's offerings will work on the PlayStation 3. Um, you know, you'll see, like, if it says works for Switch, PlayStation 3, like, it will it will work. Um, you can even use a DualShock 4 on a PlayStation 3, and it will work perfectly fine. That's probably why I thought this would work on a PlayStation 4. Yeah. Who's, who's still got a PlayStation 3 laying around, you know? I do. I have it. I have it hooked up in the basement. Bunch of weirdos. Those people must be. Yeah, oh, you, you do. Know. Oh, there's a delay. I didn't. I didn't hear it. <laughs> uh, butthole. Uh, next week when I get the PlayStation Five, I will try the controller with the Ape Do adapter again. Maybe I'll make a video using both the the Xbox Series X controller and the DualSense on the Switch. Um, there but you that'll, go. That'll probably take a little bit to come out um anyway we got some very notifications busy boy next week. it's gonna be very busy next week oh look it's yeah. eddie with 50 bits disney park fanatics are the worst fans in the entire world it's where karen was born i don't uh deny that uh i don't know if that's where karen was born but yeah no disney park fans are they're they're a strange breed it's definitely the mecca for karen though it's definitely where they're. It might not be where they're born, but it's where they're gonna go. I don't. Mm. Okay, so I don't. It's statistic. It's statistically proven that all Karens eventually go to Disney World at some point, right? Whether or not it's like their mecca or their homeland, I don't necessarily agree with that. However. I've known plenty of people who are weird about Disney parks. I'm not like saying they that go multiple times a year. Yes. I'm not saying that everybody who goes to Disney is a Karen. I'm just saying that right. Karen's like Disney. Karen's you're right. Karen's do like Disney, but I don't necessarily think that it's their Mecca or their birthplace. I think that. So it's their if, Gaza strip. <laughs> <laughs> is what you're saying <laughs> they're trying to claim it for their for themselves <laughs> i'm just saying that you you should not be surprised that there are a lot of karens at disney world right i mean not not necessarily because that's where they live or that's where they're from but there just happen to be a lot of karens yes Anyway, well, Marquisard says it might be their spawning grounds. We're saying it's not where they were created. It's where they are attracted to. Right. It's where they must go at some point in their lives. Yeah. At least once. At least once. Yeah. Uh, anyway, by no shadows with the three months. I've never been happier to see my one, to see one of my favorite podcasts live. My nerves are shot. Hello, how are you? Thank you for hey. being here. I appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, all right, what else we got? Not all Ubisoft PS4 games will work on PS5. Now? Not? Not. Not all. I read this wrong Not. before. I thought it was now all. Okay, so, you, you, you go. 
You go. All right. So. All right. So Assassin's Creed Syndicate and a few other uh, of the series spinoffs won't work on PS5, as according to Ubisoft. Uh, I'll read the original article, then I'll go back to our update. Uh, most of Ubisoft's back catalog of games will be back compatible between next and current gen consoles, with few exceptions, the publisher wrote in a note on uh, Friday. Uh, these exceptions include some of the publisher's other games, which these these exceptions include some of the publisher's other games, which as well. Uh, here is the full list: Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Assassin's Creed Chronicles, India, China, and Russia, Star Trek Bridge Crew, Werewolves Within, Space Junkies, and Risk. Strangely, these games were left off of Sony's official list of non-backwards compatible games published earlier oh. this month. Ubisoft also says that all of these games that are currently on Xbox One will also work on Series X and Series S. It's a shame to see Assassin's Creed Syndicate not make the jump, especially as it's the first game in the series to feature a playable female protagonist. The Chronicles games, meanwhile, are also some of the most diverse and varied mini entries in the Assassin's Creed series. Um, there was an update um, at not at 9.06 p.m. on the 30th, Ubisoft has since taken down today's support page announcing backwards compatibility expectation, exceptions on the PS5, and it now links to an earlier announcement about Ubisoft Connect. We have pulled the Ubisoft Connect article and forum posts regarding backwards compatibility for the time, being as there may be some inaccuracies involving the Ubisoft titles that will be playable on PS5, the publisher wrote in a statement to Kotaku. Spokesperson for Ubisoft did not immediately elaborate on what the inaccuracies might be. So, bottom line is, even though Sony is trying to say that the PlayStation 5 will be backwards compatible with PS4 to an extent, we still are unclear as to what that extent is. Sony themselves announced 10 games that are not compatible with the PlayStation 5 and Ubisoft is now announcing and then backtracking their own selection of games that will not be compatible, including Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which was one of their top-tier AAA titles. Uh, yeah, that's. I think at first I was like, all right, it's not a big deal. If some of these games aren't going to be backwards compatible, it really doesn't matter. But it's the fact that they were left off of the of Sony's list of non-backwards compatible yeah. games. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Why weren't why? Why would they say that they're backwards compatible and then go back on it? Yeah. So what did Ubisoft say? That there there might be some inaccuracies, but they didn't straight up say that they're gonna they 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 said there might be some inaccuracies, but they did not elaborate on what those inaccuracies are. They did not say, you know, this game this list was put up in error. They did not clarify that these games would be uh playable on PS5. They did not clarify that there are more games that are incompatible with PS5. All they said was there were some inaccuracies on this list. Bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, they just say if you're working on making them backwards compatible or not. Why? What's yeah. hard about that? You see, this this is part of the reason why, like, I bought Cyberpunk for Xbox One because. I know that game's going to work with Xbox Series X when it comes out. I could, they've said it will work with PlayStation 5, the PS4 version, but I have all these questions about PlayStation backwards compatibility. At least with Microsoft, like they said, like yes, it will work. And so far, they've shown a greater commitment to backwards compatibility than Sony has. I just... it's It's so weird that they're not being clear about it they've never really been clear about it since they announced the playstation 5 right yeah sony's not sony hasn't been great about backwards compatibility but here it seems like ubisoft is uh not doing a good job here either <laughs> ubisoft is not helping matters right you know they, they could have come out and said hey yeah, they could have clarified that, yes, unfortunately, we could not get our games to work on the PlayStation 5. But they didn't. <laughs> Let's 
plow through this next story here. We also got Sony has Sony says no to people's dreams of colored side panels for the PlayStation Five. Sony's like, Big get out of my deal. face. This was like on every gaming website when it was announced. Um, with its two tone black and white color scheme and swooping uh, curvy sides, PlayStation Five Swoop. features uh, one of the most divisive designs in console history. This is like many gamers dream up of ways to customize the PS5, PS5 design with one company even releasing pre-orders for aftermarket side panels until Sony shut it down. After Sony released teardown of the PS5 showing the side panels simply have uh, showing side panels with simple tabs that seemed like they would just uh, be a cinch to swap out, a company that originally went by the name PlateStation oh. put up pre-orders for add-on panels and other accessories in a range of colors, including black, red, uh, silver, blue, and camo for 40 bucks a pop. Unfortunately, shortly after creating a website, which is now defunct, and announcing its PS5 accessories on Twitter, Sony got wind of PlayStation's plans and forced the company to rebrand and cancel sales of its third-party PS5 side panels due to patent and intellectual property issues. I, I mean, well, this is sh- like duh like it's it this doesn't mean that they're not gonna sell side panels and stuff it just means you can't name your company plate station i think by doing that they they intentionally like they intentionally knew that they were going to get sony's attention i hope i'd hope so unless they're really dumb yeah um the team behind plate station hasn't given up hope as the company has rebranded as Customize My Plates and pivoting to making custom console and controller skins for the PS5 instead. The obvious downside to this approach is that vinyl skins are more annoying to apply and not quite as durable as simply swapping out a brand new plastic panel. Uh, That said, by using skins, PS5 owners can get more freedom to customize their console with more intricate designs or patterns and change the look of other areas of the system like the glossy black midsection. Um, so basically this company wanted to make, you know, actual plastic pieces that you can swap out for the big white fins of the PlayStation five, but Sony, in addition to saying, change your name, told them do not do that. Uh, Yeah. I had to pivot and change to decals. So there's always like a, like a licensing issue or, or a copyright issue when you're intentionally trying to mislead people into thinking that you are a different company and Mm -hmm. that's what plate station is. It's like very easy to prove that they're trying to capitalize on someone else's intellectual property. Um, A skin, I guess you could skirt around it. Uh, Yeah. Cause that's, that's the thing that struck me because like not only did they have to change their name they have to change their product they're no longer selling plastic panels that you could swap in and out they now have to sell stickers that go onto the plastic panels they, that they must comes with the system they must be afraid that the panels are uh uh intellectual property but for whatever reason the skins are fine yeah well i mean a skin is just a sticker people sell skins for all for systems all the time right um but it's weird because when they did the teardown, they showed that you can just pop the panels off. In fact, that's how you get to the NVMe drive uh, that you put in yourself. Well, my, I mean, Microsoft sold faceplates for the 360, but they were Microsoft, know, Microsoft branded. I think also, too, Microsoft intended to sell faceplates for right. the 360. Right. Sony did not intend to sell faceplates for this. They, When you buy the system, you are buying a big white and black router you are not buying anything else (laughs) right uh yeah so i mean this i don't think this is news i think it's it's just a they're just shutting down a cut like i don't think this means that we're not going to see face or or side panels i think that eventually we might it eventually i yeah no give it a year i think we'll start to see like cheap like chinese made knockoffs on amazon but I think the fact that Sony, you know, I understand why Sony made the company change their name, but change their entire product line. That's what's interesting to me. So, to me, that says Sony believes that their side panels are an integral part 
of the PS5 design, and they do not want anybody messing with that in any way, shape, or form. So, to me, it seems like uh, this company was asked by Sony to cease and desist, yeah. and the company decided that uh, the side panels were not it, that the side panels might be too yeah. close to their intellectual property, and the company is deciding to change to st- the freaking glorified stickers yeah um, but i mean we you can buy shells for joy cons and the switch itself and dual shock controllers to you know swap out for those mm-hmm. you know and that i'm sure sony and nintendo and microsoft don't want you to do so she's giving it like a year and i'm sure there'll be unofficial versions of this floating mm-hmm. around amazon um but yeah, it's just it's interesting that Sony would specifically not want them to make side panels. Uh, hey, uh, Nintendo revealed its 15 most downloaded games. Did you know that? Well, uh, yes, uh, for the month of October, specifically in Europe, these are the 15 most downloaded games uh, in the European Switchy Shop for October of this year. Uh, number one is Hades. Uh, I knew everybody liked this game, but I guess I'm surprised uh, that that many people like this game. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this was a huge uh, deal when it got announced for Switch, but it was out for a while on yeah. on PC and stuff. So yeah. it was weird that it got so much like, uh, like, a, like a resurgence because it came out yeah. on the Switch. Uh, but apparently it's really good. So mm-hmm. I understand. Uh, next is th- uh, Super Mario 3D All Stars. That makes perfect which, uh, sense. Which we learned, of course, is like the best downloaded Mario game of all time, or some weird thing like that. Uh, and then number three is Minecraft. That's weird. <laughs> I'm surprised. I mean, I know Minecraft is like a perennial bestseller, but I'm surprised to see it so high up still. Right. That is weird. It's like when- like when Grand Theft Auto V was in the top 10 best-selling games for like 10 years straight. I, I feel less weird about Animal Crossing New Horizons being number four. I feel right. less weird about that because at least yeah. that came out this year, you know? Yeah. Uh, FIFA 21 Legacy Edition. I Again, this is Europe. Yeah, that's why. That's I'm why. Sure, I'm sure it would be in the top 15 in America, but it definitely wouldn't be number five. Yeah. Uh, and uh, again... Uh, FIFA 21 for the Switch is just FIFA 19 with a roster update. Because FIFA 20 was just FIFA 19 with a roster update. Right. So I don't know why people are letting them get away with that. Yeah. Uh, Then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, number six. Mm -hmm. I thought everybody owned that game already. (laughs) Uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, number seven. So that isn't doing well apparently uh it's doing worse than pikmin 3 did on the wii u which is really? not normal for switch games yes yeah um maybe this is new news maybe maybe it's doing better than previously reported I but uh know. i know pikmin is not necessarily like a best-selling series like well, yeah. it, it never really sells like highly according like amongst other nintendo franchises but if if pikmin 3 is really is doing worse on switch than it did on wii u that is that is devastating so so according to go nintendo pikmin 3 deluxe launch sales data for uk oh here we go now available sold 18.5 percent fewer units than its original wii u launch which i mean it is a relaunch so you'd expect it to do worse but for right. Nintendo Switch titles, for when they bring Wii U titles to the Switch, they usually do way, way, way better because they've right. got a bigger install base. Right. I mean, case in point, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> that I mean, people are still buying that because people are still buying Switches. So that's yeah. why that's always up there. Oh, it's that time of the night again where Rue decides to eat his own tail. Rue, stop. <laughs> doing that there's no nutrients in your tail hair yeah i've i'm seeing like pikmin 3 not doing as well as it did on that's sad and then that is number eight is number eight is stardew valley 
That's crazy. AKA, uh, Harvest Moon for people who like Harvest Story Moon. Story of Seasons. Story what? of Seasons. Sorry. Uh, number nine is The Survivalists. Number okay. 10 is Pokemon Sword. I'm surprised The Survivalist is up there. Did that just come out? Yeah, it came out on October 9th. Yeah. Uh, number 11, Minecraft Dungeons. So Pokemon Sword is up there because of the DLC. That was just right. released. By the way, I don't like the DLC that much. It's cool if you want to play oh, with no? friends and if you want a shiny hunt. Otherwise, not that great. Yeah. All right, I'll, I won't get it. <laughs> Minecraft Dungeons, okay. I guess. Uh, number 12, 51 Worldwide Games. It's Clubhouse, oh, it's Clubhouse games. games. Right, yeah. okay. That makes sense. That's kind of cool that that's yeah. still up there. Oh, my stream disconnected. Oh, crap. So you got anything to say to just the podcast viewers as well? Um, I mean, just the YouTube you guys, viewers? You guys are the real fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, Twi the Twitch people they're cool but they're not like you guys cool you know you're the real lifeblood of this channel the twitch people don't mean shit to us really <laughs> uh, make sure you slap a like if you hear this part of the of the podcast yeah. you know you're very slap serious. a like share it with everybody you know too especially the those dirty twitch people those dirty ugly stupid twitch people yeah can't believe them. And to all you audio listeners out there, you guys, you're my real best friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you guys get me in a way that nobody else does. Is this going to freaking reconnect anytime soon? You got to hurry up before this thing uh, starts a new VOD. I would be really mad if it does. Yeah. Uh, I blame Twitch. This hasn't happened wasn't this in a long supposed time. to be the. Wasn't this supposed to be the better platform for this type of stuff? Yeah. You know, this happened, though, on YouTube also. Yeah. To us. So, I don't want to knock it too much. Somehow, we have more viewers than we did uh, when we were actually live. <laughs> ah, crap. It's actually, it's actually disconnecting. Oh, no. Start uh, streaming. Come on, you piece of crap. Oh, it's actually not working now. Like straight up not working? It's like straight up not. I mean, I'm, we're still recording for the podcast. Right, obviously. Oh, it's true. All the podcast listeners can hear us too. Not just the yeah. YouTube people. I, I definitely didn't forget about the, the audio listeners. I definitely didn't. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, I'll just check my email. I bought, and I'm not proud of this, but I found a guy on Etsy who makes custom weapons for uh, action figures in the six inch scale. Oh boy. And he make, are you ready for this, Bob? What? He makes a uh, Walther P38 handgun modeled after Megatron's gun form from the original Transformers with the silencer and the shoulder mount and the scope. So Ooh. I bought it fully painted and I'm going to give it to my Cobra Commander figure so I can tell people that Cobra Commander is using Megatron as his primary firearm because that is what the pandemic has done to me. <laughs> I mean, that's like a, that's like an IDW crossover. Yeah. It, I, like the the GI Joe classified series is like a great series of figures. I love them. I'm collecting way more than I thought I would. Um, but all the figures have uh, weird like sci-fi fantasy weapons instead of like actual military weapons, which is fine for the most part. But Cobra Commander has like these weird snake shaped gun, and I think giving him Megatron as a gun. <laughs> Would just be that much more cooler. I, so I, I have to stop the recording for a second. Okay. Hey, we're back, baby. All right. The New York, or I guess the East Coast servers went down. Or at least our connection to the East Coast servers went down. Yeah. Oh, it might be dipping again. Oh, great. Oh, uh, you know, I think it's just that we're streaming to the West Coast now. Okay. Anyway. 
Well, potentially not our faults. Yeah. <laughs> but it might be a bumpy ride from here on out for the Twitch viewers. Yeah. Anyway, sorry so, everyone else who's listening to this. Uh, yeah. The, the, the next... Will was just talking. You know what? Never mind. Watch the podcast okay. if you want to listen yeah. to what Will was talking about. Uh, <laughs> we we were at fifty one worldwide games, clubhouse games. Yeah. So and to round out the top fifteen, it's Ori and the Will of the Wisps, um, Breath of the Wild, which again I thought everybody owned that game, and Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh yes. Uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate, the best selling fighting game of all time. Yes. Number fifteen. Yeah. This is again for the UK. Yeah. Uh, anyway, last story that we have is Halo Infinite loses its director after project delay, but we knew it was delayed already. Right. Uh, but I think the director left because the project is being delayed. Uh, Chris oh. Lee, who oversaw a production of Halo Infinite F343 Industries, which is developing the game for Microsoft, is no longer working on it. He confirmed to Bloomberg News on Wednesday, Lee is the second top director on the project to leave in the past two years. Uh, the highly anticipated uh, next Halo installment was originally slated to come out alongside Microsoft's launch of its next generation Xbox Series X in November. The game was delayed in early August, however, following poor fan reception to an early public version. Lee's role was sidelined a few weeks later as Microsoft brought in Halo veteran Joe Stanton to lead the single player campaign and another senior executive, Pierre uh, Hintzy, to run multiplayer. Uh, Lee had been at 343 since 2008, a year after its founding, uh, overseeing the Halo series since 2016. His title has been partner studio head. Uh, Chris Lee remains at Microsoft remains a microsoft employee and while he has stepped back from halo infinite right now we appreciate all he has done on the project to date um the development of halo infinite has been rocky in august 2019 343 industries lost its creative director tim longo and executive producer mary olsen at the time the company said that the overall creative vision and production of the game remains led by chris lee uh pushing the game's release beyond november was a blow for microsoft which was uh relying on the game to help sell the new xbox consoles in the holiday season retail boxes for xbox series x still feature artwork of master chief the main character of halo uh this this is the second creative director for the game that's now yes. leaving yes so yes. they're going to have a third even though they're at the tail end of development yes <laughs> that's insane what that says to me is that this game was not going well. No. And I think the the negative reaction to the reveal confirmed that, that the game was not going well. And this is Microsoft's baby. This is Microsoft's Mario. This is their uh, Sonic. This is their, we need to Bubsy. make this, Bubsy, we need to make this the absolute best it can be. Uh, especially if we want this game to sell systems like the original Halo sold systems. And if that means we have to remove people from the project in order to get it to where it needs to be, so be it. Uh, it's, I mean, I, it's sad because it makes sense why this is their baby and it makes sense why this would be so important to launch at launch with the Xbox Series X, which it failed mm -hmm. to meet. Um, I'm surprised, like, there has, to, this all means that there's some sort of weird internal conflict, but yeah, what went wrong? Like, what, like, Microsoft should have done everything in their power to let 343 get this done on time. Yeah. Something, well, I mean, COVID probably, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure that didn't help, but yeah, I mean, we have all these other games that are releasing on time in the pandemic this this game should have been uh and also the consoles releasing on time this yeah. this game should have been uh slated to be finished a few months ago so that they have a mm -hmm. buffer period you know but i guess i yeah. mean the pandemic probably hit them hard but but if they're going to continue to go forward with the series x uh they should have put a lot more into this game i, I they probably realized they weren't going to make the date too late but yeah. that's that seems like a failure in leadership too if, mm -hmm. you, if you if you're gonna miss that 
Same thing with Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk, I mean, if, if you're not going to... Well, Cyberpunk is a complete failure in leadership. Yeah. <laughs> Delay three times. We're not going to crunch. Hey, guess what? We got to we gotta do crunch. Yeah. Oh, well. So... Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it, it's it seems like there's a conflict between 343 and like it seems like there's a conflict between the development and Microsoft, but also some sort of uh, problems with leadership. It could be because of Microsoft, but it could also just yeah. be the guy didn't know what he was doing. Nobody knows. Um, but that said, I, I this game uh, is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they can turn it around. Uh, hopefully, hope I really hope it comes out great. I would love to yeah. play this game. Uh, that's it. That's all the news we all have. All right, there you go. But now we do have. You know what time it is, Will? You know what you know what the time is. Is it tweet of the week time? Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Yeah, yeah. You, you you know well it's tweet of the week time. Yeah, yeah, buddy. It is from. Uh, oh, I thought this was from Tony Hawk. Apparently not. It's from Kraken with an eight in the middle. It says Tony Hawk was Larry David for Halloween, and it's a picture of. It's a great picture of Tony Hawk, just on a pool, <laughs> catching some air, but he's dressed as a pretty accurate Larry David. That is beautiful. And guys, that was your tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. I just had to, I had to play it again. Uh, yeah. So now is when we uh talk to you people. Yes. Do we do hashtag or whatnot? We, how no, do we talk? No to hashtag. No hashtag. Do, do we ever figure out how we're talking to people? We're talking to them in the chat. We're talking to them in the YouTube comments. All right. So if you're in the chat now, leave your questions or comments. It also helps if you highlight your comment. Um, also donations. Uh, yes. But also if you just comment in the on the live stream on youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast, in case you're not here with us live, uh, we will answer it in the following week's Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, just like uh, AW did. Who says, I'm a 90% docked Switch player and only recently decided to treat myself to something better to play with that the Joy Cons and any play with that something better to play with than the Joy Cons. Any new recommendations since the last controller video a year ago? No. 8 bit do SN30 Pro Plus is the best. Let me take that back. It depends on what type of games you're playing. The Pro Controller is probably the best controller for the Switch for most people. But if you're going to be playing a lot of 2D games, the Ape Do SN30 Pro Plus is the best controller for the Switch. If 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 you lean a little bit towards 2D games at all, mm-hmm. the Pro Plus is uh the best controller. Uh Edgar Ray- Reyes says, I had no idea you had a podcast. FYI, YouTube placed this on my feed and I subbed. Hell yeah, dude. There you go. The algorithm works. It's doing its job. Yeah. Uh, Prize season says it will. If Will is using a Go XLR, I have clicky issues with my SM7B as well. He is not. He is using a no, uh, a Behringer Basic Bitch uh, Euphoria UM2. I'm gonna get you the one that I have the Roland Rubik's, but right. I don't think that's going to fix it. I think it's an issue with Discord. Okay. Because while you were doing the little clicks today, I was playing around with the bitrate, and that helped l- one week when we did that. Yeah. Messing around with the bitrate. Um, but I will get you... Oh, I just punched the dog in the face. He jumped up at me, and I didn't realize he was jumping up. Uh, anyway. Once OBS and even and everything is open, then plug in the XLR and set up the audio. It should come through clean. Yeah, I'm going to try to just get you the Roland Rubik's. That cable, I mean, the the cable should be fine. Yeah. Sarah Anderson, loving the podcast. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And Stephanie Chang says, we have two original Switches, and Switch Lite is our 
in our household. Our daughter uses uh, hers 50-50 docked and handheld. Younger daughter is probably 90% docked as we generally play three or four games with her. Mine is the light, so obviously only use handheld hiding from my kids to play, lol. It may be more and more towards handheld when PS5 arrives, though. Um, I see what you say. Like, when the PS5 arrives, they're going to swap out the Switch, put the PS5 there, and then just use the Switch as a handheld system. That's true. Like, it's probably going to lose that HDMI spot for some people. Yeah. So then instead of just plugging in, people would be people would opt to uh, just pick it up and play it in handheld. Yeah. I understand. I don't know what I'm going to do with my... I still have no clue what I'm going to do with my setup. Yeah, I have to... If uh, if and when I do decide to get the next-gen systems, I have to build an extra shelf in my basement. <laughs> I think I do too, but I don't know what to do. Yeah. I need to like... I would love to have it like up on the wall over here, but I can't drill into the walls. Or yeah. I'd rather not. <laughs> I guess I could like do it on the desk. To be honest, like desk. seeing all the pictures and the videos of how huge the PS5 is, I'm willing to wait for the PS5 Slim. True. Because that thing is just gargantuan. Maybe I should just put it under my desk. Yeah. Or no, you know what? I have room right here to my right. I could build like another little tiny like shelf. Yeah. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. Uh, anyway. Uh, hey, we got some notifications here. We got uh, da uh, Dante. No, I think Triton, the one guy with 15 bits. Hey, Will, did you watch the first episode of The Mandalorian Season 2? Did you enjoy it? I did. It was very good. Uh, I especially liked uh, the fact that it turned into a justified episode halfway through. <laughs> I got to uh, just finish yeah. the last season. You absolutely do. And I can't say anything about Season 2 just yet because it pretty much just opens on a spoiler and then the very end of the episode is an even bigger spoiler is there so. extended universe stuff extended kind of universe stuff okay kind of not I saw, like i i saw a picture of like something disney plus put on instagram and i felt yeah. like i was being spoiled it, it, you got to remember that the Mandalorian is essentially uh, fan fiction. <laughs> it is officially licensed fan fiction. Mm -hmm. So when you think about Mandalorians and what a fan would write, it falls in line with that. Right. But it's done very, very well. Uh, we got Dante Mira with 100 bits. Hello, Bob. Sorry I'm late. Here's my late fee. I'm sorry you're late too because I feel like you're late because you got the second notification that we went live again on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, we also got Scribe of Wormwood with five gifted subs to Alec is baking. Wow. J Bay, D Shiza, Gelo, and Mighty Ike. Thank you for gifting all those subs. I appreciate it. I'm sure they do too. If you're a new oh, sub yeah. here, you can link your Discord, your Twitch account to your Discord account. And you get into our supporter only Discord, and I post videos there early. You can watch them a little early. And yeah, uh, Disney Plus basically posted a spoiler for mm. the new episode of Mandalorian. Raymond Claw Hepcat. Thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, guys. It's really nice to see you both tonight. Looking forward to seeing what you thought about the direct. Oh, well, you got to watch the vod then <laughs> uh Tr trokey thank you for the prime subscription uh now i'm in the chat yes uh <clears throat> bob did you see my tweet no you gotta link it or something you can't just do that <laughs> uh, uh scribe of wormwood any experience setting up a ps3 through ATEM Mini and OBS. I can get my Nintendo Switch to run that way. The PS3 Fat just won't show up. So here's a, a fun quirk about the PS3. It's HDMI output. Um, 
is DRM'd. It has what's what's that HTCP? HDCP. Yeah, it it's got a really hard encrypted HDCP code in it, so you actually cannot get gameplay capture footage via HDMI from the PlayStation Three. There are two workarounds on this. One is to use component cables um, and hook that up to whatever you got. The other workaround, and this is actually what I used uh, when I had to get footage from Spider-Man on PS1 when I used my PS3 to record it, is you buy an HDMI splitter. I and am, you first hook up... I am linking first one up, now. What? I am linking one to him now. Yeah. You hook up the PS3 to the splitter, and then you hook the splitter up to your capture card. And that, for some reason, breaks the HDCP encryption. So this is what I've used to break HDCP before I put it in the chat. It's called HDMI splitter. Y-I-B-A-I 4K HDMI splitter. However, Mm -hmm. it is sold out. Currently unavailable. Uh, Let me see if... I can find the one that I use because I remember the one I got was like dirt cheap. But it doesn't have to be like anything fancy. It could be like. Yeah, the one I 20 bucks. I bought it in 2017 here. I'll. I'll link you that one. Um, yeah, so that, that that seems like the only way you're going to be able to break that HDCP. Apparently, AJ has a problem with the PS4 is HDCP. He just can't turn it off. I mean, that sounds that definitely sounds like an AJ problem. Yeah. <laughs> um. We also got Pork Chop here. Hey, Will and Bob, have you ever played any of the Lego Batman games? I remember playing the games on the Wii, and they were very fun. I never got to play the third game in the series, but the first two games I played were very good. I only ever played the first one, and it was very good. Um, the problem is I played that with my wife while we were dating, and that is not a game to play uh, with your significant other. Why not? That is, I mean, it seems better than something like Mario U Deluxe. It is better than Mario U Deluxe. But if the problem is because it's one of those camera systems that pans out and eventually stops. Uh... So if you're way ahead and the other person is far behind... And if the other person isn't as good at games as you are, then it can lead to some frustration. Here's Jay Bebe's tweet. Uh, she's multitasking. Uh, what are you doing? You got... It looks like election stuff going on on the TV. Yeah. You got. I haven't seen anything about the election. Yeah, I told my wife do not watch the news and before I started streaming... We won't know anything for a while anyway. Yeah. Um you got us on your laptop and you got mm-hmm. the Switch Animal Crossing. Okay, what are you eating? Those look like crushed up Pop Tarts. You need to explain yeah. yourself. What do you got in that bowl there? But I appreciate you fitting us yeah, into your life there. For- uh, cool, Chris says, each time I try to stream my PS3, my Xbox 360 stares me in the eyes and says, F you. <laughs> Is your Xbox 360 still alive? Yeah. He also said, uh, Is this the same person? Yeah. He also says, Have you ever peed? Uh, Yeah, before the stream, actually. It's I'm, nice. I'm in no pee November. I'm on day two. No pee November. No, day three. I, 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 this is just a yeah. blur. Yeah. Scribe says, got it. Great. Thanks for the info. Really helpful. No problem, dude. Uh, it's white chicken chili. What? Ooh. I gotta get another look at this. That is that is fancy. I make damn good vegetarian chili, if I do say so myself. Yeah, I make a really good opening of the can. <laughs> Did you vote? I voted. Will voted too, right? I did. I voted early, and I have proof I voted because I finally got a sticker. I I absentee ballot, so I didn't get a sticker. 
Uh, it's like, why even bother? Your vote doesn't count then. Our mother put on Instagram a picture of a sticker, like a generic, like, it looked like a clip art picture of a sticker or a pin or whatever. And it said, thanks to all the early voters, I was in and out in five minutes. And I just said, yeah, I said, no problem. <laughs> yeah. And guess what? Our father either copied and pasted it and posted the exact same thing to his Facebook or our mother copied and pasted from him onto her Instagram. It's or, the exact same it's the exact same image or, and the exact same text. Do you think maybe she uh had like the Facebook thing clicked on Instagram? Maybe. That's a because our mother uses our father's Instagram. I'm uh, sorry, our mother uses our father's Facebook as her Facebook. Uh oh look at Eddie says, is it possible to have my Elgato hooked up to my PS4 Pro and switch at the same time? No. Well, you can yeah. get an HDMI switcher, which is different than a splitter. Yeah, but uh, just I I just unplug and plug back in every time I switch, <laughs> which is probably bad. I I mean I have an HDMI extension cable, so I'm not like ruining the inputs on my Elgato. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, uh, it's Wolfie Den, but on the Twitchy Tube, confuzzling. <laughs> Killy Key Caro, thanks for. Ruining the podcast. We got to end now. That's it. Yeah. Baby Wook Princess. Off fudge. How deep are we in the cast? Should I just wait for the VOD? We're done. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we will have it put up as an archive version over on youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast where you can watch it anytime you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast over on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and available on your podcast service of choice such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. Uh, did you mention youtube.com slash Wolf Dead Podcast? I did mention youtube.com slash Wolf Dead You're Podcast. so great. I am wow. I am the best. Uh, Delta 9 says, Bob, HDMI switcher recommendations? No. If you find out, let me know because I need to get one. Uh, if I posted... Oh, switcher. Uh, no. I got, I got a different thing of that. Never mind. So, so, so here's the thing. If I get an HDMI switcher, it needs to be HDMI 2.1. Um... I was going to say check mono price because they have a lot of good switchers, but two things. One, they are they can get pretty expensive. Uh, two, actually three things. Two, they can get really confusing because they can do like two outputs and like eight inputs and they don't make it clear what's what. Mm -hmm. So you might accidentally buy eight outputs and two inputs, which you don't need. And three, I don't think any of them are 2.1 yet. It's yes. really hard to find HDMI 2.1 compatible Anything. cables and switch yeah. yeah so i mean I, I don't need that stuff yet but i am on the lookout so i'll let you guys know what i find um yeah i'm gonna need something like that now i mean during this podcast i decided i'm gonna build a freaking shelf over here for the new consoles yeah uh so that's gonna be a whole thing and then i'm gonna be cramped in this little corner um anyway i don't know i'll probably be live again on thursday uh and next week is the new consoles baby it's gonna be it's gonna be wacky it's gonna be a thing uh, i'm trying to see if we should raid somebody right now who's on anybody... better be someone worthwhile i don't want to raid the same people every time uh f i'm not raiding anybody thanks for right. hanging out goodbye Bye.